The Times has just published a document, uh, a an article, which says that everyone knew about the Michelle Moan scandal and, uh, and, and whether or not indeed everyone did know. And it doesn't look as if everyone did. And the National Crime Agency has been handed a vast dossier and Gove has said that he hopes they get on with it and and prosecute. Michelle Moan is not liked in the conservative uh, halls of power. Michelle Moan is being distanced heavily and is being set up for the fall. And, you know, perhaps with good reason. Uh, the gowns which she produced were never used by the NHS um, because there was a quality inspection. Uh, there was apparently a claim that they could be irradiated or something. This was then tried and proven to be wrong. And uh, Lord Bethel has said very clearly, Michelle Moan wasn't honest about her financial interest to me. She didn't explain from the very beginning about her financial involvement. It wasn't in her House of Lords register of interest, as you'd expect. Rishi Sunak is right to, quote, take this very seriously. And uh, another cabinet official, apparently, according to the Times, has said, uh, has confirmed that um, Bethel is right about the House of Lords register of interest. Never a peep. And then Moan pocketed £60 million profit for her family. Now she's feeling sorry for herself. You couldn't make it up. I think she's despicable. And, and of course, she's now busy selling. Uh, I, I believe the house in the Isle of Man was on the um it was was up for sale and the house in uh in in london has been sold and the yacht is being sold it's as if they're planning a trip and it's categorically uh false uh says the dhsc uh the De the department of health it's categorically false that she declared everything to the department i've gone back and looked through paperwork and all of this against Moan's claim last Sunday. Uh, I can't see what we've done wrong. The hatred. We've been absolutely vilified. Um, well, there you are. Uh, but uh, she then went on in that interview to Laura uh, Kunzberg to say uh, that she had lied to the press. That's not a crime. Surely everyone lies to the press, she might have added. Isn't that what you do? You lie. Well, that's not how the press take it. The press think that they are the organ of truth. The organ of truth. Well, you know, but it establishes the fact that deceit comes easily to this honourable lady, to this baroness, to this jumped-up individual in underwear. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know... Um, uh, we all know what it is to lie to attempt to secure a government contract. That's fraud. That's what somebody has said. Fraud. So the talk of fraud is open. It's open, and I think she's going to find it very difficult to wriggle out of this one. She might categorically deny that she intended to defraud the um, British people, the government, uh, but... The, the, the level of hatred to Baroness Moan parallels the level of hatred that seems to be there to Matt Hancock. I, I think these people are being lined up as uh, the people who are going to take the rap for all the wrongdoing during the, um, during the COVID crisis. Now, is that fair? Maybe not, because there's probably... This is the tip of the iceberg. Um, but... You know, uh, apparently on May the 7th, 2020, so the Times article goes on and says, on May the 7th, 2020, uh, there was a phone call between Baroness Moan and Michael Gove. And I just said to him, we can help and we want to help, she recalls. Gove, then in charge at the Cabinet Office, was said to reply, oh my goodness, this is amazing. The following day, Moan sent an email to the private addresses of Gove and Lord Agnew. Um, we have managed to source PPE masks through my team in Hong Kong. 
In order to commit to this 100,000 masks per day, could you please get back to me ASAP, as freight will also need to be secured. And she talks about my team, though uh, PPE MedPro was not set up until quite a few days later. And apparently she was rude, abrasive and bullying uh, to uh, Agnew and various people uh, when she was trying to accelerate the progress of her commission. And the deal to for her to supply 25 million gowns at £4.88 each was signed on June the 26th by Edward James, then the deputy director of the DHSC, who was awarded an MBE for services to healthcare. Mm. Yep. And uh, the taxpayer is still paying for these gowns to be stored. Now, I don't know where they're being stored. Apparently, they were initially delivered to Daventry, just down the road uh, from where I used to live. So I don't know whether they're still in Daventry, festering away. Um, but uh, <laughs> on June the 12th, apparently, a civil servant said that gowns have been approved by technical and then 60 gowns were randomly sampled for sterility in April 22, and most of them failed. PPE MedPro said the tests were a sham. Well, they would, wouldn't they? And the, the whole thing seems to be a chaotic um, ruse. And meanwhile... Baroness Moan and her family have pocketed the money. And if there's a problem, surely they should have invested the money in solving the problem, even if they didn't make any profit. They were working for the common good. But I don't think that's... I don't think that was really the objective. The objective was to work for the personal pocket rather than the common good. Ooh, have I said something inappropriate there? I do hope not. And uh, meanwhile, what we're what we're going to hear, uh, the, the Times think, and 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 I must say, I'm in time, I'm inclined to agree. What we're going to hear over the next few weeks is a lot of bickering from Baroness Moon at Rishi Sunak. It's as if it's the first time she's spoken, isn't it? We haven't heard her speak in the House of Lords. Why is she in the House of Lords? What has what what has she done to justify her? position to justify her place there. What has she done? Why is she in the House of Lords anyway? Is it something to do with underwear? Or is it her extraordinary um, business acumen? Is it her ability to, to make a buck on the side? What What is the reason she was ever put in the House of Lords in the first place? And should she retain her uh, peerage? Because quite frankly, Baroness Moon has done more, Baroness Moon has done more to justify uh, Sir Keir Starmer's plans to get rid of the House of L House of Lords in just a few just a few months of stupidity than anybody else on record. So Baroness Moan, she's going to be responsible for Sir Keir Starmer's um, uh, sweeping changes to the House of Lords. I think I I I think she, if she's got any dignity at all. She would bow out ASAP.